If you've never changed the nozzle on your 3D printer, it might seem like a daunting task for those of you that haven't done it yet. Well, I'm here to show you guys today how to do it properly and go over some precautions when it comes to changing the nozzle on your printer. Well, you guys are in luck because today I'm swapping out the nozzle on my CR10 to something that's a larger diameter and conducts heat better so I can print faster. So stay tuned, I'm gonna show you guys how it's done. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get our nozzle out of the way of everything else on the machine. I usually like to have mine in the center and then I'll push my bed towards the rear of the printer. And then I'm going to now move my Z up so I have room to work between the nozzle and the build plate. On your machine, you can press the menu button, go to prepare, move axis, move Z and move 10 millimeters. So I'm going to have this move up and I would say give yourself about 100 millimeters to 150 if you have the Z height. This is on a CR10 so I'm gonna take this up so I have some room to work on here. So I'm gonna let this raise and then I'll come right back. So I have my Z moved up so I have plenty of room to work between the nozzle and my build platform. The next thing to do is heat our nozzle to a temperature of 240 degrees Celsius. To do this, press the menu button again, go back up to the higher level menus, and then if you're running our firmware, you can go to preheat ABS and select preheat ABS end. This will set your nozzle to 240 degrees Celsius. So I'll let this get up to temperature and then we'll come right back. So now we have our hot end at 240 degrees Celsius. I'm ready to swap the nozzles. Now, if we look at our hot end setup here, you can see I have a silicone sock on the block. Now, since we're working on the hot end, I recommend you be very careful because this is very hot. This is at 240 degrees Celsius. I usually will grab my silicone sock with a pair of needle nose pliers to expose the heater block. Now, this is a volcano style heater block. You can tell that by the heater going vertically instead of horizontal, but all these are the same idea. You have your heater block, your nozzle, and then above here is the heat break that connects it to the heat sink in the upper portion. What we want to do is make sure this heater block does not turn when we're replacing this nozzle. Now on some of your Creality machines or similar hot ends, they actually have two screws, one on either side of the nozzle that prevent the heater block from rotating. And if you have one of those, you actually do not need to hold the heater block in place. Just make sure you actually have the two screws in place. But on this machine, I do not have those in place. So there's a couple of things we need to do. One, we have to be mindful of our thermistors. If you notice on this particular block, our thermistor is on the left hand side. Your printer may have it on the left or right, but you can identify the thermistor by the little leads right here. You can see right here, the thermistor wires, and there's a little retaining screw. Your hot ends are usually set up like this with a retaining screw and then these clear PTFE lined wires to go down to the thermistor. We wanna make sure we do not hit these with our pliers. In addition to the thermistor lines, we have our heater lines, which are right here coming into this printer. On your other ones where the thermistor and the heater are horizontal, they'll usually be right next to each other. And you gotta make sure that you don't hit either the heater wires or these wires because this has to be done while it's hot. You'll need to figure out what size socket you need to fit onto your existing nozzle. This is a volcano style nozzle and they usually use a seven millimeter socket. As you can see here, the seven millimeter fits quite well. Now, once we're swapping these out, we wanna work quickly because as we put this socket on the hot end, the temperature is going to drop. And if you have proper firmware on your printer, it could trigger thermal runaway. So you need to work quickly so you don't trigger the runaway. If your printer triggers thermal runaway, then restart the printer, set the temp again, and resume where you left off. I'm gonna put my socket onto my driver here, and then take my larger needle nose pliers here to hold the block, making sure I don't grab the thermistor wire and then work quickly.
I dropped about four degrees Celsius on that. And you can see here, I have the nozzle out. One thing you wanna look for on your nozzles is there should not be filament on these threads. You can see this is a little discolored, which is normal, but there's no filament on these threads, which is what we wanna see. If you have filament on these threads, that means last time the nozzle was installed, the heat break wasn't seated up against the rear of the nozzle. I have our new nozzle. I'm putting the 0.6 Easy Flow nozzle in here so I can get a little bit faster printing out of this machine. And your nozzle you're putting in may have different size than what you took out, so just double check that. In this case, ours also used a seven millimeter driver. When you put this in, you can start this by hand, especially if you're working with a volcano like this. And usually right about there, it's gonna start getting warm. We're not going to want to touch this anymore. What I'll do is thread this in. And you can see the heater blocks wanting to turn. So at this point, you're going to need to grab the heater block, make sure again not to hit any wires, and tighten the nozzle down. Now, when you're using these copper nozzles, you don't want to apply a ton of force because you can actually damage the nozzle or even shear it off in the block. You can do that with brass nozzles as well too. And with steel ones, you can also damage the rest of the parts. So what I'm gonna do is just give it one more snug, grab it, snug it up. If your hot end was originally assembled correctly and you bought the correct nozzle to go in your hot end, there should be a tiny gap between the nozzle and the heater block here, like we see, once the nozzle's fully in. As you can see here, my heater block, if I touch it, it's not wiggling. That means my nozzle is now seated up against the heat break. That's the correct installation. If for some reason your heater block is wobbling, you'll need to disassemble the hot end further to thread the heat break into the block more so you can close the gap between the back of the nozzle and the heat brake. There should not be any gap between the nozzle and the heat brake. But if you order the correct size nozzle for your machine, it should just be a direct replacement like this. At this point, I'll usually feed some filament in manually just to make sure I'm getting flow through it. And you can see here, I am getting filament through my nozzle. So at this point, you can reboot your printer or just tell the hot end to turn off. If you have a silicone sock, which I highly recommend, we carry these for the Volcanoes and multiple other styles in our shop. You can go ahead and put this back on. If you find that you have a ton of filament on your block, go ahead and clean this off, heat it up, turn off the printer power, and then gently clean everything off with a wire brush. Do this with the power off, because you can risk shorting out your heater to your thermistor, which will then kill your board. So before you put a silicone sock on, make sure you get the filament off the nozzle, line it up, and then press it back on. A lot of these have locking tabs on the top, so make sure those tabs are pushed all the way up. And your nozzle should be lower than the sock. But as you can see here, our nozzle is sitting lower than the sock. So our replacement is all done. Well, hopefully I made it seem easy and gave you guys all the tips you need to successfully swap the nozzle on your printer. Now, one thing I do after I change a nozzle on my machine or just put a new hot end on my printer is after a couple hours, I'll go back and make sure there's no filament leaking out from the nozzle end of the heater block or the heat break. If you guys do notice you're getting some leakage, go ahead and stop the print and heat your nozzle back up to 240 degrees Celsius. Carefully clean the filament off using tweezers, a toothpick, or a wire brush, just make sure to turn the power off after it's heated. Then with the nozzle at 240 degrees Celsius, go ahead and back the nozzle out about five turns and re-tighten it down. One thing to check is if you have a PTFE lined hot end, like what comes on the stock Creality machines, is make sure that PTFE tube is all the way into the hot end because the end of that PTFE tube needs to contact the very back of the nozzle in order to form a tight seal. If there's not a tight seal and the PTFE is not cut flat, you're going to have issues. Now there's a couple of fixes to get around that if you do have this problem. There's a guy by the name of Luke who goes by the handle of One Bad Marine 
and I'll put a link in the video description where he has made this awesome fix that forces the PTFE all the way into the hot end with the exact length you need to cut. And it actually decouples that part of the hot end PTFE from the rest of your tubing. If you have a Creality hot end and you're having issues with the PTFE tubing causing jams or leaks, or you're getting a gap between the tube and the nozzle, I highly recommend you do this upgrade. One thing I do on my hot ends that have the PTFE lining, before I put the PTFE tube in, I'll loosen my coupler up a quarter turn that actually holds the tubing into the hot end, push the tubing all the way down into the hot end, and then tighten the coupler down. This will make the coupler force the tubing down into the hot end. You guys also might be wondering, well, why would I want to replace my nozzle? Most of your printers come with a brass nozzle that's a 0.4 millimeter diameter size, and you might want to replace your nozzle for a number of reasons. There are three main types of nozzle on the market. Your brass, your steel or hardened steel, and plated type nozzles. Your brass nozzles are great for everyday stuff, but they're not good for stuff like carbon fiber or glow-in-the-dark filament. Your steel or hardened steel nozzles are really good for abrasive filaments like glow-in-the-dark or carbon fiber. Because steel doesn't conduct heat as well as brass, you may need to increase your print temperatures to compensate for that lack of heat transfer. Now, there are many different types of plated nozzles, brass, steel, or copper. And my personal favorite is the copper plated ones, and we actually have our own brand of these called the Easy Flow Nozzles. That's what I ended up putting in my printer, and I went with the 0.6 diameter nozzle. And I personally like the 0.6 diameter nozzle because it still gives me the ability to print some detailed prints if I need to, but it's also not too big. One thing to note is when you do go up in nozzle size, you might not be able to print smaller details and smaller prints as accurately or as detailed as you would with a 0.4 nozzle, so that's something to keep in mind. You can also keep multiple nozzles on hand and swap them out as needed if you are doing multiple different prints or you only have one machine. The nice thing about the copper plated nozzles is that you get three times the heat transfer of brass and the plating protects the copper from wearing out from abrasive filaments. In my opinion, it's the best all around nozzle because you can still use it with your standard filaments and you don't have to worry about heat transfer issues like you do with steel or hardened steel nozzles. And if I wanna print some carbon fiber or glow in the dark, I can just run it through that nozzle and not have to worry about it getting chewed up by those abrasive filaments. The only potential downside with the plated nozzles is the cost. They range anywhere from two to three times the cost of a brass or steel nozzle. And that's the reason a lot of people don't go with them because they might not be okay with spending $15 or more on a plated nozzle. Given all the information I gave you guys, choose the one that suits your needs and your budget. If you're not gonna be printing abrasive filaments, then just stick with the brass nozzle. We actually carry all three types of nozzles in our store, brass, steel, and the copper plated nozzles. So if you guys wanna check out any nozzles, we carry them for most major hot ends, including Creality's, V6's, and Volcano types. And that's all there is to it. I hope the information was helpful. I hope the video showed you guys how to quickly swap your nozzle and covered all the points to make sure you don't mess anything up. I'm gonna go print something big on my CR10 now that I got that new nozzle installed. So I'll see you guys later. And as always, happy printing.